The big game is fast approaching, but wait, you still haven't got your tickets. You've spent hours searching, but you're still confused about ticket prices. Time to stop searching. Visit TicketCompare.com. We compare ticket prices for all the popular leagues and tournaments for you. We work only with the most trustworthy sites, so you can have peace of mind when buying your tickets. Compare prices, buy tickets, get to the game. TicketCompare.com. Buying tickets made simple. This one here, Yes. Good afternoon, everyone. Welcome. Thank you for coming to this press conference for our new manager, Marco Silva, alongside our new director of football, Marcel Brands. We'll start off. Uh, excuse me. Sorry. We'll start off with uh, a few words from Marcel, please. Yes. Good afternoon. Um, welcome all. And a special welcome, of course, for our new coach and manager, Marco. Um, we pronounced the news uh, one of the last days, and um, I'm happy to have him here over at Finch Farm today. Um, the reason why we uh, choose for Marco, I think, is uh, several reasons. It's a young, ambitious, and a modern coach. Um, he has also coached with national experience, international experience, and Premier League experience. I think that's one of uh, the most important things to uh, to choose when we have to choose for a new uh, new manager in uh, in Everton. Um, players that worked with him were always uh, po very positive about uh, about the coach, and that's also a very important thing because he has to work with uh, with a lot of players in uh, in Everton, and he's also a coach that um, is aware of the academy. And wants to uh, wants to give young players chances, and that's also important for the future of Everton. So I give the floor to uh, to Marco. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. Mm, first, uh, I would like to say I'm very proud to be to be here, to be a new Everton manager. I'm excited, really happy, and looking forward to to start. I would like to thank. Um, the owner, Mr. Farad, and the chairman, Mr. Bill, Marcel, and all the board for the confidence in our work. Can start. Yes, thank you, Marco. We'll start with uh, Vinny from Sky Sports News, please. Marco, welcome. First day in charge thank you. officially. Um, can I ask you exactly what is your first priority? What is the main priority you see here at Everton Football Club for you? A lot of things. Um, I cannot say to you the, the first priority you have. Um, some of them, of course, is, um, is an important moment for us to start to, to meet, to analyze everything, to start to, to know each other, to, to start to build a um, good relationship because it's really important for me. Um, like, uh, like I like to work, my approach every day is to, I like to work in a good environment, of course, with a big demanding uh, every day, but it's important. Of course, we will analyze everything. I did my my own work, of course, Marcel is doing as well. Um, and you have a lot of things to do. Uh, step by step, we have time in a, enough time to, to do that. 
what then do you see as the club's identity? Okay, it's easy to understand uh, how is the the our culture as a club and the our identity as well. Um, I know what the, the our fans expect and what I know what uh, they want to see every time and every game in our in our in our team. Big commitment, big attitude, always a big motivation and big ambitions in our in our team as well. And it's all obligation. I think it's something when you are in football, uh, we need to put in every day in your work. It might be a bit early to ask this question then, though. But how do you transform a side that had the fewest shots, fewer shots on target, and created fewest chances in the <laughs> Premier League under the previous manager? Okay, I don't want to compare nothing. Um, if you pay, and of course, I, I think we you did your homework as well. It's easy to understand. Uh, how my team's normal played, and uh, how we did in the in the past. Now is the moment to to prove again here. Um, big challenge for us, um, and you are working to to win the match. And to win the match, you need to create chance. You need to score, um, and of course, you need to to have clean sheet as well um, if you can. It's taken a long time to get you here, going back to October, November of last year. So. What have you made of Watford's approach to this whole situation that is still ongoing as well with regard to any complaints that they have uh, against Everton's behaviour in, in terms of trying to get you to this football club? I don't want to talk about the, the past really. Um, great respect for all the clubs I, I have worked for. This for me is clear. Normally I don't like to, look, to talk about the past because it's not important. What for me is important, I'm really happy to be here to talk with you about the present and the future. The, the, the Everton, and this is the most important, um, and not to talk about the past. Of course, he's a, a club when I work with the very good professionals. I have big friends there as well, but now is the next step, new page in my in my work, in my job, and uh, it's a moment to look forward. Can I just ask though, are you surprised that Watford are still complaining about when what went on, and are they right to complain about Everton's or, or your own behaviour in this situation? Yeah. Okay, I don't. Uh, I will repeat again. I don't want to talk about uh, this situation. Um, I know what is my behavior every day. I know what Everton did as well. What was or what for did? It's not the moment to talk about this situation. Not Im not important, really. It's not important. Well, is it okay to go back for Watford players in the transfer market? <laughs> <laughs> I expect there's a, that question as well. No, normal, and uh, I think. It's already started, and the next few days will come names and names and names. We know really what uh, what we want for the for our team, uh, but uh, the first thing we'll do for sure is to look inside uh, to analyze everything what to, what we have because it's really important for us. And after be be assertive um, and uh, find the right targets for us. I do have a list of names already. Rich Allison is one. Who? Rich Allison. <laughs> 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 I have big names, I have big names, the list is not so big, it's not so big because it's important for us what we have in our hands, it's important to the, the, the respect for, for our squad, for our players, of course we'll do everything what we can to improve, to put m more competition between them here because it's something I like to, to work, I like to see every day keep competition between our players to, to take his position in the, in the starting eleven. of course we'll do that. But we'll, I repeat again, we'll analyze everything inside our squad, our players, our young players, and after we'll take the decision. I'll have to give you one more name though, Carvalho at Sporting Lisbon. One more. And, uh, <laughs> I know you have more here. <laughs> oh, <with> Jamal Lascelles <laughs> as well as Newcastle. And uh, for Marcel Lozano, any chance there as well? Is there interest from Everton Football Club? No, what's the manager said? Uh, I think the most important thing now is to look at our own squad. Um, you did a lot of homework and then you also knew that we have 38 players so um, we have to look uh, what we will do for the for the next season and, and of course we think there are maybe uh, a few positions that we look for targets and then we uh, want to sit together the next uh, days and uh, look what positions also with our scouts um, what we think is the best for Everton. Well, so I can ask what time what role you had in Marco's appointment because obviously the interest was there prior to your arrival here yeah um, I had a meeting uh, I think three weeks ago um, and then um, 
that was my, my first meeting with Marco and um, that was then uh, to look if he could be the right man uh, for the position of manager and um, I was very uh, enthusiastic about that and after that uh, I signed the contract and just short uh, after then uh, Marco agreed. So how will it work between the two of you? Who will have final say over transfers? Yeah, that's always the question uh, <laughs> that would be asked. Um, Sorry to be predictable. No. <laughs> we do it together because it has no sense to, that I uh, try to, to get a player for Everton uh, and the coach is, is not uh, willing that play because uh, he is going to make the, the, the starting 11 and, and that's not my job. So I worked with uh, a lot of uh, good coaches, uh, with, uh, with, with, with Louis van Gaal, with Ronald Koeman, with, with, uh, with Philippe Gocu, and I never had uh, uh, one player that we didn't agree both, and so I will also do that with Marco. Obviously it didn't work out for Ronald Koeman here, but have you spoken with him about the football club? What, what's he had to say to you about taking this job? Yeah, I spoke with him and uh, he was very, very positive about the club and uh, he, the things that he told me, uh, only um, been a few days here now, but uh, it, it's absolutely correct. He told me a very family club, um, club with, uh, with great ambition, a club with uh, great possibilities and I think, okay, we have to work on that and uh, I, uh, I was not surprised because uh, he told me a lot of good things about the club. What news is there with regard to Wayne Rooney? Has there been any attempt from either of you to get him to stay? What is the situation? Is he likely to leave? Um, yeah, there is a possibility that he will leave. and um, He's talking with, uh, with Washington and it's not a secret. Um, and of course we will, we also, we will talk with him. Um, and if this is a move that he wants to make and the next step in his career, like a lot of big, big players do and did in the past to go to MLS, then I can only one thing say, then I hope that he will return when he when he's finished there, because I think he he still is a, is a legend in this club. And I always hope I did that in PSV and I always hope that to do also here, to use the legends also in the future for the club. What are your thoughts, Marco? Did you want Wayne to stay? Oh, yeah. Before we arrive, uh, is something is already done. Yeah, done, not done, but he's already started this uh, this deal the, with uh, with Atalanta. Of course, is is something. Oh, Washington, sorry, is something we um, we expect. We'll see the next few days. Of course, we'll talk with uh, Wayne, Wayne Rooney because he's he's a legend. He's a legend, a club legend, and we. We need to understand uh, everything. Of course, like Marcel said, the the door is open every time for for him. Uh, of course, I will talk with him. We'll see and we'll see where everything what's happened until this moment and after is a uh, Wayne's decision. And in terms of assessing the other members that you have of your squad, how much work have you been able to do at such an early stage? And thinking about the likes of as well, Sandro Ramirez has been out on loan. Uh, Ademola Luckman as well also out on loan and David Klassen who didn't get much game time last season. Yes, um, we can talk about uh, all the names. Of course, uh, we'll take the, the, the decisions. I understand your curiosity about uh, Sandro, about uh, some of the players didn't perform well the, the, the last season. Um, I'm looking forward to start to, to work, to start to take uh, decisions as well to, about our squad. And after we'll see what, uh, what is our, our decisions. What is your ambition here, Marco, as well? And is it a way of casting out any kind of doubts? Of why will it be different at Everton, I suppose, is the point I'm trying to make, because you haven't stayed in your jobs for a prolonged period of time. Why will this be different? Why will you have maybe greater longevity here? Yes, it's, our, it's my goal, it's the, the, the club's goal as well to do to, to this. I enjoy here not for one, two, three years. For for something, for something more. It's a big project. It's a big project. Big challenge for for us as a technical staff uh, as well. And the club uh, had a um, fantastic approach um, for ourselves. Um, they show the, how big is the project as well. It's a huge club, huge story behind behind us as well. And um, you know the football, everything at the end, everything what is important. The results, but we need to to do something more to develop the club, the, the club, develop our players, to getting the club better every every single day. 
this is our our goal as well. And of course, I need to prove every day. Uh, I want to stay here, and I want to be here because it's something um, I heard in the last uh, in the last two years I, when I was in Hull and last season as well. Every time I heard the, the Everton wants to to give the next step, Everton wants to give the next step. Uh, we know what is the next step. It's something you cannot change in one month, two months. It's something you we need time, but you need to start uh, to take the results since the, the the first moment as well. Uh, but I repeat again, big project, uh, huge club. I know what is behind me. I know as well what the the fans expect the, about our team, and we are ready to 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 prove every day what we want. What is that next step? You know what is the next step. <laughs> you know what is the next step. No, the next step first, and is a, the only thing is important to to make our our fans be proud of our team. This is really important for me. We need to build a, a strong connection between the team and them. I know because I, I felt when I I played here and the last uh, the last two seasons. This is a fantastic atmosphere here. Um, they push really the the, the team. Um, they are demanding, and for me, it's it's easy to understand why. Um, demanding fans reflects how big is the club, and um, I felt that. And but we need to build. We need to give them some some good feelings as well, because I I'm sure if they they feel we are doing everything, every single match, they are in the, at the end they will be proud of our team. And after, it's a matter of taking results, and we'll do everything to take the results for us. Finally, for me, plans for the next few weeks. Are you going to the World Cup, either of you? Looking at players, Marcel will be busy for sure. Uh, but um, I will, I will have some plans. We'll see. I will have some plans. I will try to to follow our our players as well. It'll be important. Uh, but we'll see. He's a busy man for for us as well. Carl, thanks, Carl. Hi, question for Marcel. I, um, Hi. I just wondered, on the, the transfer business, um, how quickly do you hope to be able to get that moving and how much does the World Cup complicate what you want to do? Yeah, we must see. Uh, we have an, uh, a shorter time than normal because uh, the, transfer, uh, close, the transfer market will close earlier and, and we have the World Championship. Um, so it will be a, a very busy time. And um, yeah, that's... When I started Friday my job, uh, I was calling uh, the whole, whole day. Agents are calling uh, about new players, but also about our players. So I think the most important thing now is to, uh, to sit with Marco and the staff together and uh, produce our own plans. And then we're going to make step by step uh, to do everything that in the, in the beginning of August, uh, everything uh, what has to be done has to be done. And, but it will be difficult. You've spoken about a squad of 35 plus players. How do you assess, with the time scale obviously you've got with the World Cup and say limited time, how do you assess which players you want to keep and which players you you want to get rid of before other than they're back in training? Yeah, that's, uh, that's a diff okay. We start at the second of July and um, we have three players in uh, in the World Cup. So uh, we have first to look at our, our own squad and we have uh, several players that were on loan, uh, a few young players that were on loan, um, and that the squad is too big with 30 odd players. That that's clear. Uh, that's that's uh, difficult to work for uh, for a coach. Um, so we have to change that and and. and from one side and the other side, we have to fill in uh, a few targets that we think we need. Okay, guys, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do our usual breakouts uh, afterwards, but we have uh, some friends over from Portugal for you, Marco. So uh, we're going to just switch over to Portuguese uh, for the next five minutes or so. We'll translate, okay? <laughs> <laughs> I'll give it a go. <laughs> Boa tarde, Marco. Boa tarde. Uh, qual é a sua expectativa? Já percebemos que o orgulho está, está bem patente nesta apresentação. Sente que, que chega a um, a um grande do futebol inglês que tem andado adormecido nos últimos anos e que tem essa tarefa de devolver o orgulho aos adeptos para, para colocar o Everton onde, onde pertence na história do futebol inglês? Sim, sem dúvida. Orgulho enorme uh, por estar num clube com esta dimensão. Um, é algo que, que nós procuramos sempre melhorar. Uh, infelizmente, Uh, tenho conseguido o grande é, é óbvio que tem estado afastado como, como, como perguntou de, de, 
de grandes conquistas a que os adeptos estavam habituados no, no passado. É algo que nós não vamos mudar de um dia para o outro, é algo que, que vai dar, demorar o seu tempo, em que vamos precisar de trabalhar bastante uh, para conseguir aproximarmos cada vez mais dos lugares que pretendemos, uh, mas temos que o fazer passo a passo, com, com os pés bem sentes no chão, uh, mas com uma ambição muito grande. Boa tarde, Marco Silva, Helder Filipe Santos, em direto para a SIC Notícias. Podemos dizer que esta vinda para o Everton foi um namoro que deu em casamento e também pergunto-lhe já agora o que acha de, nesta altura do mercado, como é que há de atacar, se poderemos ter jogadores portugueses, por exemplo, a fazerem um companhia aqui no, no Everton. Sim, foi um, um namoro que se iniciou e depois uh, parou como é normal uh, e como, como era obrigatório no, no momento e como devia ter sido feito e que real, neste momento, estando eu livre, um, o interesse apareceu novamente, o clube acabou por mudar de treinador e o interesse apareceu novamente. Em relação à, à questão dos portugueses, eu percebo a questão, uh, são jogadores que eu conheço uh, muito bem, uh, percebo isso perfeitamente, neste momento nós vamos analisar com calma, não temos pressa absolutamente nenhuma para fazer, para fazer nada, temos tempo suficiente para preparar as coisas bem, para atacar o mercado uh, no momento certo também, não pretendemos mexer na equipa como mexemos a época passada, com muitas, muitas entradas, temos um... um um plantel muito vasto, uh, muitas decisões para tomar uh, e depois na altura certa iremos atacar os nossos alvos. Marco, António Pires do Jornal Jogo. O Marco vai ser o terceiro treinador português esta época na Premier League, já confirmado, para além do Nuno que subiu com o Elvo e o José Mourinho no Manchester United. Qual é a sua opinião sobre o que estes dois treinadores têm feito na Premier League e aquilo que espera fazer agora no Everton? Sim, o Nuno, o Nuno teve o seu sua primeira experiência em, em Inglaterra, a época passada teve um um sucesso tremendo com a, com a subida e ter sido campeão ah, e o José, todos vocês sabem o que tem feito tudo aquilo que ele tem feito ao longo da, da sua carreira neste país e não só um, e vai continuar a fazê-lo não tenho a menor dúvida uh, para nós é importante uh, estarmos, estarmos representados desta forma num, na melhor liga do mundo, na mais competitiva liga do mundo também um, e eu acho que é um orgulho para todos nós para, para todos os treinadores portugueses Marco, boa, boa tarde André Ferreira do Jornal Record um, chega ao Everton, um clube que, que não ganha um título há algum tempo, também esse é um dos passos que quer dar com, com o Everton, apontar a um título na, em inglês e também devolver o Everton às competições europeias, também pode ser um dos seus objetivos. Ah, nós temos que ter noção da, da, da realidade, como eu falei, é um clube enorme, um clube com uma dimensão muito grande, uh, mas temos que perceber que não é por acaso que nos últimos anos esteve afastado de das grandes disputas. Uh, nós temos que perceber o porquê, dar os passos certos. Há, há uma competitividade enorme, grandes clubes, uh, grandes orçamentos também atrás dos, dos clubes também e nós temos que ter os pés bem assentos no chão. A ambição não nos pode faltar, agora temos que ter noção da, daquilo que são os nossos objetivos e para aquilo que vamos, vamos lutar. Basta olhar para as últimas épocas o que foi. Uh, nós queremos melhorar isso, mas que temos que ter os pés bem assentos no chão. Ok, okay guys, thank you very much. Uh, we're going to do these in a, an orderly fashion. Uh, Marco and Marcel are going to separate. Uh, we'll start off with the national dailies uh, for Marco, then on to Sunday daily, Sunday newspapers, then the radios, uh, then we'll have uh, some locals with uh, radios as well. For Marcel, uh, we'll do the Sunday newspapers first, then on to the radio broadcasters, then the national dailies, uh, and then we'll do some locals as well for Marcel. So if you want to just get together in that order, and then we'll do some one-on-ones with uh, you guys as well. Okay? Thank, Thank you very much. Thank you. We'll just uh, go into another room. Yeah. All right? Hold on. Okay. Thank you.